Welcome to the Apostolic Center Podcast. So glad to have everyone back. Today we have Brother Nolan and Sister Flannery with us. Thanks for being with us, guys. Thanks for having us. We're going to cover a couple different topics. Um, first one I wanted to talk about, you know, you both have grown up in ministers' homes, which has pros and cons. Um, I wanted both of you to kind of just speak on that, you know, what are kind of the, the pros to that growing up? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You want to go first? You go ahead. Um, you know, I thinking about kind of my family dynamic and the Dowdy family dynamic, how, um, how similar uh, the two families are. Um, really, our, my family is one generation behind, um, behind the Dowdies. Mm-hmm. Um, and and just, just kind of hearing the stories of uh, the Dowdies upbringing and, and my family's upbringing is very similar. Um, I'm blessed, like the Dowdies, um, that how my mom and dad are at church or, um, you know, my dad behind the pulpit, um, it's the same way at the house. Like, he is he is who he is. Um, and my mom is who she is as well. So um, that's one of the pros. Um, of course, not being negative to any other um, pastors or anything like that. But um, sometimes, you know, obviously the – somebody behind the pulpit's not the same way at home or whatever i'm blessed to say that at my house that's that's not even close to being the truth so um the pros of um you know the the pros of of growing up in a pastor's home um is is to see that guy behind the pulpit he's gonna come home and and just be the same way at the house Mm -hmm. and uh, so that's one of the the many the main one of the many pros of growing up in a minister's home yeah pastor kind of talked about this last night and he said uh something that he was exposed to you know all through his teen years and stuff was when ministers would come he'd get a chance to be around ministers Mm -hmm. is that something you would experience as well oh absolutely absolutely that's um you know pastors um, my dad would put people in my life to um he would have them come preach but then on the side like hey go eat lunch with them <laughs> yeah. so that's uh um you know looking back that's one of the mo- most cherished moments that dad would strategically pick people uh to come through and preach and bless the church but most he would say most importantly come you know influence his children mm-hmm. and uh so i'm very very thankful for that are there any of those relationships of people you're still in contact with today oh absolutely um one it's cool now too as far as us uh doing kids ministry um and 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 preaching out some um some of those people have invited us to come preach and uh we've got one we're doing in um january we're going down to brother uh, jimmy tony's and uh, that's somebody dad brought in mm-hmm. several times to come and and uh which uh he uh, was one of the first um people i called to to tell him about flannery and, oh, and uh, yeah so <laughs> uh, but um so he's he's a he's a good one and that's uh probably one of the most the, the closest relationship as far as from that uh, from dad bringing somebody in so what about you flannery well, I'm fifth generation apostolic, so growing up in minister's home, your grandpa being a pastor, your uncle being a pastor, your dad being a preacher, you never had to question what they believed. You know, mm. not only do my parents live for God, but my grandparents too, all my family, all my cousins, now even Uncle Basil, you know, mm. everybody lives for God. So you never had to question what you believed. You were raised in it. You were taught in Sunday school. You were involved doing all the things. So I think that's one of the pros, knowing that you never had to question what your parents believed or what your grandparents believed and right. you just get to be involved in ministry everything you do was at the church you know you never had a question coming to church all those things so that's that's a, a neat um, point is being so involved uh, in the church um, that you don't you're there's no schedule conflicts yeah. it's like, your life was the <laughs> church yeah, it's like you it's uh, uh, you having a church family well, we can't have something for the family because right. we're at a church event. Right. but right. the cool thing about in the same way with the Dowdies, it's like the best family time at our it's, church, it's events, church events, yeah. you know, because uh, we're all involved, and that's a, um, a like blessing. those fellowship dinners y'all do. I think mm. that is so that's so fun. Absolutely. That karaoke, that I know everybody had a blast at that, and families got to do it together mm-hmm. at church. I think that's making awesome memories at church. Well, what better family time can you have than yeah. uh, and then, doing something than uh, singing bad? Yes, <laughs> together <laughs> in unison. Oh. I love it. Flannery, you find yourself um, participating in a lot of your dad's ministries or? Yeah, um, I think so. Um, Well, 
he, you know, he, when p- the pandemic happened, um, that's when I really started getting into kids ministry because, mm-hmm. you know, he got the green screen and all the things and we were setting up for the live stream Mac live services. What, and what do they call you? A uh, faithful flyer? Yeah, something, <laughs> something really silly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I like to, an outreach to, um, you know, Bible studies. I've been in several of my dad's Bible st- at home Bible studies and just having a burden for that. Um, me and Nolan, you know, we like to do it together, like him and my mom do their Bible studies together. So I've kind of not taken that on, but just love doing that. Um, like I've watched him do at home. So that's kind of the, the most rewarding thing, um, kind of in our marriage is kind of to do stuff together ministry wise. Um, it's like, uh, one of the first services, it was, it was very not eye opening, but just kind of the, the benefits of, of being married to somebody like awesome mm. um you know, <laughs> so uh I preached a message it was terrible um uh, went kind of it was i wanted to escape so i went and like prayed afterwards mm. and, like thank god for getting us through that and whatever Hiding, and, then, yep. and then flannery's down there she prayed somebody through the holy ghost and i'm like and this is awesome but it's like so rewarding to do stuff together um well, my love language is quality time, so it's like no matter what we're doing, I want to do it together. So even ministry, you know, everything yeah. we like to do is together. Yeah, so it's yeah. very that's very rewarding. Yeah. I don't uh, think people take advantage of that in marriages. Um, you know, they think, well, my husband has a ministry and I'm going right. to stay at home. Mm-hmm. No, you shouldn't participate in your ministry with your husband. Right, sure. and we've watched our parents do that too. Absolutely, so. absolutely. It's like once you see both Corey and Charity, you always seem together. It's like my parents Mm-hmm. Um, like my dad does not have any hobbies. He, he literally, his <laughs> hobby is to be with my mom. Yes, and, and, and uh, reading, studying. And... Yeah, it's like drop her off the front door at the mall, go study, yes. and then pick her back up. Like that's just what he does. So, yeah. Uh, so, are there any kind of? I know sometimes people don't really see some of the negative side, and I'm not saying that your parents did anything negative, but is there any like overdue criticism or some stuff like that that comes your way in a minister's home? Well, I think probably what you do, people do in excess. So it's kind of, you've got to live the standard, probably above the standard, mm-hmm. you know. Right. It's, um, for instance, in this is in this season of, um, of travel and stuff. Yeah. Um, we're very, we try to be very careful of, of maybe how many services we miss or whatever. There's like a count, you know, mm-hmm. um, because what you do in moderation, you, your people, the folks you're leading are going to do in excess. So, um, so we, we've tried to, to stuff like that. We try to be careful with, um, you know, growing up there, obviously people are going to be people. So with being, um, um, we, at our church, we have a, and Anna that's here too, I have a, a pastoral team. Mm-hmm. Um, and so sometimes you get the thought of, or the comment of, you know, the pastor's children doing this. And, and, you know, I, there, there's really, I, I, I would, I would love not love to, but just for the sake of this podcast, like tell you some horror stories, mm-hmm. but I really don't have, right. um, I really don't have those stories of some saint being awful, uh, if, if anything negative uh, that was said, I probably deserved, you know, speeding <laughs> in the parking lot, you know, my dad getting a call and, yeah. um, you know, stuff like that. I, I deserve that. So it's good for me. But um, as a whole, you know, some, sometimes it's hearing um, probably the most, uh, the, probably the most memorable thing of my upbringing as far as in a negative light would be someone uh, maybe walking away from the church or, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because they're they're disagreeing with what your parents do or right. what your parents preach, and so that's probably the most um, hurtful thing. Because when people get close to you, maybe in uh, high up in ministry or whatever our church, and if they would walk away, that's probably the most uh, yeah. uh, probably the negative thing. Because not only are they uh, this is terrible to say it this way, but not only are they disagreeing with the scriptures, but they're disagreeing with your family right. um, mm-hmm. and what kind of what you stand for. So. That would probably be a negative thing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, kind of switching over to children's ministry. Is this something that you guys have always wanted to do? I talked with John and Michaela a little bit about this, or is this something that kind of just fell into place? I love children's ministry. I Now, I didn't really start until a little bit before the pandemic. I started working in Wednesday night church, mm-hmm. um, but really hit hard during the pandemic when we did all those little Mac Live services. But I I guess I've always liked being around kids, so I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I guess some people 
have told me I like to act crazy and act like an idiot. Yes, so it's your gave, personality. They gave me a ministry <laughs> for it. So gave, it fit. Gave me a title for it. So um, it was four or five years ago. Um, our um, our children's minister and his wife, they wanted to still be very involved in the church but kind of just repurpose themselves. And uh, so there was a an opening for it. Um, there wasn't like a clearly defined person that was going to take it. And so I remember being in like a family meeting and they were talking about it. who could do that. Could this person, no, oh, they're too, they're too busy or whatever. And it kind of like hurt my feelings. I wouldn't even thought of. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Hey, I was like, and I, I pulled somebody to the side. It was my brother-in-law, Zach. I was like, Hey, I was like, I'd love to do it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so from that, they, they put me in a couple of services and, and then we, um, formed a, a pretty good team and then of course getting married my team got amazingly better if mm-hmm. that's a um uh, a term to you so um but there's there's a couple of things that i um i've always liked like object lessons mm-hmm. and uh so sometimes doing those in big church is like you know this guy's you know Who is this guy yeah. Come on. but then with the kids i feel like they um i hope they enjoy that so uh but i've always i i, I like I like praying with people through yeah. uh, for the Holy Ghost. Um, and so that's kind of the best. Um, it's, you know, a majority of them at some point. All of them are going to need the Holy Ghost right. at some point. Um, so you really find, I find it being the first opportunity to um, not show them the scriptures necessarily, but to where, to where they can understand it. Right. And uh, so that's, that's kind of a cool aspect of, of kids' ministry in my mind. Um, we, we have this, was this chart at our church that we kind of go by. Um, it's, it shows them as a baby. It shows them taking their steps, them growing and then to being a full adult. And this is not necessarily a thing that, um, <clears throat> is like a, a natural, a physical age, uh, chart, but maybe a spiritual age. So in our, in our ministry, we try to, uh, we might have a six year old, um, that we get them born again spiritually, so uh, they're that baby. But if we can get them to a mature Christian by the time they're ten years old, we've done um, a good job. I guess to say a good job, hopefully it's terrible. a good job. Uh, hopefully a good job. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we get some twelve-year-olds that they they're not even that baby stage yet, mm-hmm. and um, so that's kind of our um, that's kind of our outlook on. Do you have like uh, a curriculum curriculum for that, or is that just well, tracking we, by the eye, you know. We right. pretty, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we try to look at the the needs of um, the try to look at the needs of the kids. How how to get them? I guess we we look at you know these these eighteen year old nineteen year olds of the past, and I guess like the best example is uh, brother and sister Dowdy. You yeah. look at them Evangel- how, evangelizing right. at fifteen years old. And right, like the, you. Not not in a negative light of, of, of the kids nowadays, but you don't hear of much of 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds. Right. You don't hear of 20-year-old pastors. Um, and, and so, you know, and I know it's times are different, generations are different. Um, but I think the one thing we can do as kids ministers is the closer or the faster we can get them to, to being a contributor right. um, in an, a, a young age, the better. Um, so it's not all about, I don't want 15 and 16 year old, 15 and 16 year old, uh, young people. It's all about them and what they want. Uh, but it, as far as if I can get a 10 year old kid to understand, um, you know, it's not all about them. It's about serving, right. um, the quicker we can really pour into them and get that at an early age. I think the more success we find as an 18 year old you know, pastor right. or missionary. Well, we have them from 5 to 12. So once they get into the youth group, hopefully we've trained them enough to right. be in the youth group and actually be in ministry and do all those things. Right. So so really that, that chart in my mind, if I can get that 5-year-old to, to be born again spiritually, that's obviously the goal of every kid's minister. Um, but then if I can get them to being um, a disciple maker, um, that, and that doesn't necessarily mean um, – a preacher or, or whatever, if I can get that 12 year old to be uh, a disciple maker, however that looks, if it's some, if them uh, trying to influence people at school, if mm-hmm. that's um, obviously, um, I think the goal of every disciple maker is to, to teach Bible studies um, and, and giving them tools, those 
10, 11, 12 year olds tools um, to be able to do that. Um, the, the, we, we've seen the, the more uh, we can get them to that thought process as 10, 11, 12 year olds, they grow up to be 18 year olds that um, can be missionaries that we would trust to uh, you go take this um, group of people here in the city and you pastor because you're you you've got a mentality that number one it's not about you it's about obviously the kingdom of God but then you have got in your mind that you want to be a disciple maker that's the goal of everything so looking at that chart if we can get them from um, you know being born again spiritually to taking their first steps um, and then pouring into them. Um, obviously, you have your curriculums on um, on salvation and all that, and that's how we get them born again. But then, uh, you know, your uh, your your month on prayer, uh, your month on evangelism, um, you can do that in fun ways. Uh, but get them on that chart to to progress and and finally be a, a mature Christian at eleven, twelve years old. That's kind of our our goal. That's awesome. How, how do you how do your services play out? How are those organized for for the kids? Um, they usually come in as far as Kids Quest Live. Mm-hmm. They come in. Yeah, kids out. That's what it's called. Yeah. So they come in uh, to the youth sanctuary, and then we usually do a song, and which they're in the main sanctuary for the first whole entire worship set up until after the choir. So they have you know real worship, praise, all the things. So then they come into the youth sanctuary, and we do like an action song, and you know kind of fun worship, and then we'll play a game, then we do another song, and then we do preaching. Yeah. Um, which you do object lessons and all the things. So that's usually how it's Is that every Sunday? It we're is. changing that. Yeah, this in the new year, we're starting every Sunday, um, Kids Quest Live. And then on Wednesday nights, we're doing kids groups, like a kids version of small groups. So we're pretty much u- moving Sunday school yeah. to Wednesday to nights. Wednesday nights. That kind of the goal with um, uh, you got Kids Quest Live, Sunday morning, kids group. Um, for instance, this month of uh, January has always been our month of prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, so the whole church will be focused, um, all preaching, all um, it, the social media stuff. It, it'll all be focused on prayer. So um, in Sunday mornings, we're, we're going to try to preach them inspiration about prayer. And then Wednesday nights, um, apply, yeah, apply that, apply the thought um, to reiterate what <clears throat> they learned on Sunday morning. I guess the worst and the worst thing it, that can happen is the message that is preached on Sunday morning to stop uh, when they leave the doors of the church um, when that service is over. Um, so when or this this first month we've tried to kind of not um, to try to what's the word I'm looking for just like redo some stuff, mm-hmm. restructure some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess our thought process is is trying to to get that sermon to go beyond Sunday morning right. to try to um, make it, make it, we've, we've, we're trying to come up with a name. Oh yeah. Um, like a make it stick kind of thing. Like take uh, home to the parent. We're trying to partner with the parents, right. giving them like a take home, like, Hey, here's what you can talk to your kid at the dinner table. Here's what you can talk to them in the car. Conversation starters. Conversation, Conversation starters. starters. Yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. um, just taking what we learned Sunday and Wednesday, how to apply it, how to connect with your kid that week and just kind of really get it into their brain you know? that's great yeah ingrained in the brain yeah i like that but it sounds like we're brainwashing Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so those wednesday nights though are going to be applying what the inspiration that they heard on sunday morning so that's kind of our structure um we our church here the past um well, i guess it was pre-covid uh started a few months before covid um in order to grow uh, I know, it's become crazy larger. how COVID is now like the yes. ground zero for everything. Yes. I know. It's like BC and yes. AD, Seriously. now it's COVID, pre year uh, of post. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's true. so true. <laughs> um, so, we we had a, um, which brother Tim Lee's no stranger to this church, so um, came help us kind of structure the idea of small groups. Mm-hmm. And uh, in order to become larger, you must grow smaller. smaller. And, and so, small groups have become a vital part of our church. And so, um, looking at our, our kids, it's like we did this in all ministries except kids' ministry. Right. So, um, it, which I know Sunday school is technically would be a small group. Um, but so we, we've, we've really tried to, to use this thought process with our mm-hmm. kids' ministry as far as with the, with the idea of small groups, of, of taking stuff right. from Sunday morning and having your small group leader, your, your teacher, 
uh, try to apply that. Because before it was like two separate things. What they learned on Sunday right. morning in Sunday school, they, it wasn't really connected to what we were preaching in Kids Quest. So this kids group, just like they do in the uh, normal small groups, they take what pastor preaches and they kind of talk about it, discuss it. Right. You know. And, and Wednesday nights too, um, um, for this, this the, I know for I think the first four months at least, we've got four, four months planned out, but Two months. Um, two months. Is it two months? My, here's my <laughs> I lunch. wish we had four months planned out. Well, so <laughs> as a church as a whole, mm-hmm. um, we'll be, uh, it'll be prayer on uh, January. It's, it's so good, I can't even remember it. Relationship? Um, for, yeah. So everybody will be taught on relationships at their level. So In February. Right. right. So um, when they go home, they leave for Wednesday night church. It's mm-hmm. like everybody learned about um, uh, the parents uh, how to train your children, how to raise your children, then the children's how to respect your parents. And so well, hopefully. Brother Carpenter is an awesome teacher, but on Wednesday nights, it was like sometimes I think it was a little over the kids' heads. Sure. So we just kind of realized, even probably some youth, younger youth. So it's like we've got to break this all down, take what he's preaching, uh, you know, and help break it down for the younger kids, right. you know. Right. That's the truth. That's because, because, and, and being here Wednesday night, it's perfect, like Pastor Sean did an unbelievable job of teaching but then you could tell at one point like you know he can preach right now if he wanted to and uh yeah. and, and so that's the same way the same way at, at home yeah. I, my dad is uh, such an incredible preacher um, and teacher preacher and teacher um but it, we we on wednesday nights we're going to break all into small groups um now my dad will have his his uh, main um, married and right like, pretty much but it's a lot i guess you'd say large small oh, group but yeah. that's kind of the, the thought process of everybody breaking up into their um, um small groups and learning on their level uh, something we're trying out and hopefully hopefully it'll work in the new year so when you took over i mean was it structured pretty well like you guys didn't have to come up with a lot of new stuff the kids ministry as or, far as curriculum or yeah everything or, or was there a lot of stuff you guys had to implement we pretty much do our own thing for curriculum i feel like like yeah. we'll come up we'll kind of like vision cast and then it, like we might look up you know other kind of curriculum but we pretty much write it ourselves. right in a sense it's, i guess it's it's just terrible but taking look and uh see what the the kids are into mm-hmm. yeah um we did an among us and that was a real big little game they played. We did a whole kids camp on that just because Among it, Us. Yeah. Among Us. Have you heard of that, Harrison? Yeah. It was a real all the He's kids. Playing it right over yeah. There. <laughs> all the imposter. kids. I feel were like playing I've heard it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've heard it, but I don't. It's like there's an imposter and they're trying to catch him. So, I, don't, I never like even a played mafia it. Type yeah. Thing. Pretty much. Okay. So how we related that to the kids spiritually? I guess that's important. Yeah. yeah so, very. Yeah. <laughs> we're all crewmates, mm-hmm. and then there's an apo- uh, imposter, imposter among, among us. us. Okay. And uh, trying to, we're, we're doing everything we can to identify that imposter. The more we can identify kind of his tricks and all that stuff the better off the crewmates are but then um then relating it to to god god came among us um and it wasn't good enough he wanted to be among us but he wanted to be in us Mm -hmm. and for us to be successful crewmates we got to have god be among us but then we got to have him in us i think another thing we need to work um or that we're going to be working on this year is we're adding sixth grade back into Kids Quest, and fifth and sixth grade is like the hardest age to reach. And so we're going to really try and just everything we do to reach them because your kindergarten, first grade, say, I mean, they're going to have fun no matter what you do. I mean, you go up there and say boo and they think it's hilarious, you know. But those fifth <laughs> and sixth easy, graders, yeah. they're in that, that hard middle school age. So trying to reach them, you know, we thought having them lead a service and song or, you know, kind of being assisting the teachers. Right. That's that's what has been our struggle. So is. really targeting them yeah. as, um, again, like you said, the kindergartners are going to be involved in whatever um, you do. But then those fifth and sixth grades, a tough, um, tough age group where they're just in that in between. Though. Yeah, in between. They're not they're, a kid, but they're not quite right. They're, in the they're too cool for kids ministry. Too cool for the puppets. But yeah, yeah. they're taller than everybody, yes. bigger than everybody, <laughs> yeah. but not mature enough to to hear the subjects in, mm-hmm. in you know youth church. So, um, and I think it goes back to that being a contributor. Yeah, um, yeah. They're, they've they've and rightfully so. They've been a taker for a few years, and, and and it's good. But then I think if we can switch their 
their thinking. mindset. Yeah, and that's what I've told some of them. You know, now maybe you use these next two years to. It's not really about you, but let's make it fun for the younger kids. And mm-hmm. you, you're going to learn how to lead a song in worship. And that, that by the time you get in our chapel services at school and you're in a microphone leading a song, you've had all this practice, you know, sure. just kind of getting in their minds like, this is for your better, like, this is this the is better you. This is going to help you yes. do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of, um, but looking back to the structure beforehand. Um, I wasn't really here there did you take that over before you're married mm-hmm. yeah oh, okay yeah so it was all it was all you a, come on all you, bro. tell me <laughs> organized mess um, uh, so we looking back we oh lord um let's think uh, it was it was it's very kids, different because it was a different location too right that yeah that, no that's true because we went through in our building we went through a, a thing where um we were all in our gym um and we really didn't have space so I, I they I know they had some stuff. Um, and I f- even feel like it was on Wednesday nights. Like there was a big kids church on Wednesday mm-hmm. nights. Because um, I remember they had it in that room upstairs that we thought was soundproof, but we found out the first service was not even close to being soundproof. <laughs> um, and so walking in walking into that, it was it was it was good. The Sunday school department was separate than the kids quest. So you had Sunday school and then you had kids quest. It was two different things. So. We took I took over Kids Quest, uh, which is was basically your live service. Which is deal. Mac Live. It's the right. Same. right, it's right, right, right. Um, and so I'm trying to remember what the what it was like. Um, I remember we had a revival to kick it off. We kicked off a revival every Sunday morning. Um, it was the Out of This World revival. Um, is that your first one? Yeah, um, Out of This World. Um, I remember I had a, a rocket suit on. It was probably the most embarrassing thing ever. Um, <laughs> we had these old wands that were like LED sticks. Mm-hmm. Um, that was cool. Um, I'm trying to think of the subjects we covered out of this world. Um, to, to go up, you got to go down. It's talking about baptism. Mm-hmm. Um, out of this world experience was um, the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's too That's cute. Four. Um, that was kind of our first big uh, thing. So looking back, you can't really think of anything. It went pretty smooth. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. It was, well. The, the, they were pretty awesome. Yeah, the they kids, were great. Yeah. And we, we even um, we even go back to them. For um, ideas. For ideas, because they're just brains. Like, he's a, he's a, um, the editor <laughs> of all graphics for Dollywood. Mm-hmm. Dollywood's like a amusement park in Pigeon Forge. Um home of Dolly Parton and uh, <laughs> um, but he does all graphics so he, his mind just works in pretty neat ways so going back to him um, on some stuff like that he they, they definitely help us out and we got some uh, of their team too brother Brandon and sister Samantha yeah. so they're very helpful For we have sure. an awesome team that, that was my next question did you guys build that whole team or was that in place uh, or, a little bit of both yeah. which uh, starting the new year we're adding more people kind of doing more of a rotation um, but I mean, brother Brandon, sister man, sister Samantha, they do the games like they love that. Yeah. They, sister Samantha is a middle school teacher, so yeah. she oh, knows okay. how to connect with those kids. Um, she's very good at that. She's a mom, very good. Yeah. Um, Her brother, kids are in kids in Quest Kids Quest too. too. So yeah, kinda... and we have some hyphen age students. Uh, yeah. You know that help us lead songs, do production. They do the right. I don't even know basically lyrics. You, you got to be willing. We found people that are willing to to look like fools for Christ. Oh yeah. Fools for Christ. Yeah. I feel like that's a good sermon right there. There it is. Um, There's your next month. <laughs> yeah. 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 How to be a fool for Christ. <laughs> I love it. Um, the kind of something we've been doing, we've added, um, is our, our Kids Quest parties. Oh, yeah. Um, it's just it's cool um, because I like to party. I like to eat. So it's like, and kids man, love to party. Let's, just, mm-hmm. let's have church and let's eat at the same time. This is amazing. Um so the Kids Quest parties are one service a month where we're, we're going to try to blow it out of the water. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, this, this doesn't necessarily mean that we spend tons of money on it. I know that's kind of one question we had about these parties is like, um, you know, budgeting a lot of stuff for it, but just doing something completely different. Because um, especially this new year. When it's we're a big in, outreach, too, because right. you get out to your community. Hey, we're doing something really big and fun. Yeah. All the kids bring their friends. All the parent daycare school parents bring their kids. This is like the excitement. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah. like 
Um, you start announcing Kids Quest parties, they know it's going to be something different. Um, what kind of jump in attendance do you see? Like you regularly have maybe 100 and then you have 200, or what, um, what's that kind of look like? We – and the, the, so the first one we did was the biggest one we ever had. We right. I I kind of I took Matt Toon's idea actually. Thief, um, yeah. come on. We had a fall. Fe- I remember growing up, we had fall festivals, and mm-hmm. I remember thinking that was so fun, and the pumpkin books and mm-hmm. the cash cycle and all those things. So I used I told, to help with those. Yeah, yep. it was so fun. Awesome. And I told Nolan, I'm like, we've got to have something like for Thanksgiving, so we called it Kids Giving. And I had a cash cyclone, like an inflatable one. Mm. They were thoroughly and, disappointed when it was when like it was fake money. fake money. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. We had come fake on. money and then like a few dollar bills in there. There's prizes on the fake money. It was but, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we, I think we had 120 kids wow. that service. Mm-hmm. That was the, probably the biggest one we've ever had. So we went from I, I mean, we normally percentage have... whatever. I think it was a 30 percent increase. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you look at the the the. Uh, big church it's like they increase 10 percent. so it's like the most if you're going to spend money on something kids ministry right. might as well do something like this because people want something for their kids to come to they want their kids to be a part of something right and that's a huge pull on right. them absolutely i Sorry, mean i, I don't know <laughs> uh you know what better advertisement or whatever what are you going to spend money on that's going to bring 30 percent? which i know right. it's a smaller congregation with the kids but it's like but 30% there and then 10% in your main sanctuary. It's like, that's a lot of bang for your buck there. Yeah. So um, these parties are, um, we relate it to, obviously uh, relate the theme to something spiritual. Uh, we had uh, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, um, ice cream Sunday. Taste and see that the Lord is good. That was mm. a good one. Ice cream. Um, uh, this we had a nacho average Valentine's Fiesta. So we yeah. <laughs> used that the mouthful. Who's coming up <laughs> with this <laughs> stuff? <laughs> She is. It's, she is. It was clever. fun. Yeah. We did a whole, like, um, I guess it was just... we had, I'm not clever We like let that, them so, do pinatas yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that was one? cool because we brought in a lady who um, kind of related that to missions a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, awesome. A love for missions since it was um, uh, We talked about love. God's love. Love right. your neighbor. Love yourself. Um, we also had a... We threw Jesus a birthday party. We did, like, gingerbread houses. This past one we just did for Christmas, we got um, a train for the kids. Sister Carpenter's wanted Mm. a train forever. And so we threw them, like, we just kind of went all out with it and did, like, Polar Express. But the Kids Quest Express. So kids wore their pajamas. That was fun. It was awesome. Holy pajamas. Holy pajamas. We really made that a big push. Yes. Yes. Holy pajamas. My dad's like, Nola, what's holy pajamas? And I'm like, yes. We were I'll we got you, it covered. Sh- yeah, well, we got it, we got it covered. Uh, that was cool. We um, that was this past Sunday. Um, what, uh, what was our our theme with it? What do we What do we talk about? For what? Um, Polar Express. Yes, getting ready to hear the bell. Hear, hearing the bell, believing, yeah. and time talking about the rapture. Right. And seems- then being the light of the world. Now that you are listening for the sound, you go be the light of the world. Like try to tell the kids, you know, we we. Um, don't obviously you're not storing up treasures here on earth but the only Mm -hmm. thing that you can take with you to heaven is somebody else and so now that you believe that was a big thing about the polar express you you believe um and then you hear the sound because you believe so um you know you believe first and then with your belief there's going to come some actions and obviously with salvation you can talk about that um but then now that you believe we're listening for that sound so while we're listening for the sound, we get busy with getting other people to believe in this um, this cause of Christ. I think another thing we're wanting to do, we saw um, Brother John and Sister Michaela do that. It was like an off night, like a Mac mm-hmm. painting night or something. Yeah, we thought that couple. was so cool. Yeah. Um, so I think for this next year, we're wanting to maybe do an off night kids thing like in February instead normally our parties are on Sundays Sunday yeah. mornings maybe in February like give all the parents like a date night out take the kids you know before Valentine's Day and do mm. something fun with it's it it's amazing like Matt Toon does something and then like three months later we do the same thing <laughs> it's like how God works like that it's, it's awesome no it's good it's, it's awesome what are some of going a little bit more serious what are some of the challenges you see with the kids facing um you know throughout the world you know, their I, personal lives. Yeah, it, the the obviously the cell phones the Absolutely. worst. Um, and two, yeah, as far as kids ministers, we're competing with um, the. the I mean, you're competing with millions of dollars and in, in movies and stuff like that. So, um, obviously, trying to use those ideas from movies that you can use to try to relate. That's somehow 
I guess the best way that we've, we've found to keep their attention. But, I mean, as kids ministers, we're battling with uh, unlimited budgets mm-hmm. and, and, and animators that are um, – their minds are obviously – uh, way better than ours, but it, it's I think battling with uh, with keeping the kids' attention, um, you know, uh, as far as what they, they can pull out their phone and be or iPads or whatever they have and and go anywhere they want. I think battling that um, has been a it's it's not a been a recent struggle. It's always been um, trying to keep their attention. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, as far as um, I, I feel like with with this with the cell phone, kids are becoming more exposed to stuff Absolutely. way sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not we're not trying to or I guess social that, media right and, and that 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 broadens your your uh, curriculum a little bit because we're not just talking about um, it's not the kids of twenty years ago. No, it's a whole we're, new. Um, we're you know we're we're talking about salvation and respecting your parents, but now we got to cover you know watch what you look at all that mm-hmm. stuff um you know and i i know these things can be used for good but if anything it's come bad from it, it exposes kids to stuff they should never uh, been exposed to especially at that age mm-hmm. um, so that's kind of a um not a, you know a struggle but something we've got to be on guard and really use our curriculum to to try to um i guess be the watchman to, to look at what's coming on the horizon and, right. and write a curriculum that we can use something that's um, fun for them and uh, that they're involved with, but then really using that to, to attack this subject of uh, what, you know, mm-hmm. what you see and all that stuff. Yeah, it's totally different. I remember getting my first phone when I was 12, 13, or 14, but yeah. it's a flip phone. Yeah. And yeah. You need to just call or text. You know, yeah. you can't do anything like that. But, I mean, these things are mini computers. Right, right. they are. You just have access to everything in your hand pretty much. Right. I mean, I didn't. I got a phone, which I, I think it's it's good. I mean, obviously, um, you want to keep tabs on your children and all that stuff. I think I got a phone when I was twelve or thirteen. Um, it was a Cricket. I don't even know if they make those anymore. Cricket. Yeah, <laughs> I got. I had like three people I can call: mom, dad, and think mm-hmm. my sister or one of my sisters. So, um, but that's one of the um, one of the struggles. Um, you know, something we see coming. Um, I was think? just going to say, I think that kind of goes back to those fifth and sixth graders because they're probably the ones the most that yeah. have these things that are dealing with the most and they're in that stage of their life. So really just reaching them and trying to. Right. And I, I think, too, with those fifth and sixth graders, you know, obviously, what you said, they're taller than everybody else. They're, their bodies they're going are, through that kind of. That awkward stage. That awkward and they're maybe self-confidence and all those kinds of things. So just trying to be, you know empower them right. and uh what's the word i'm looking for like build them up right, right. Build I, I, their confidence i mean when when you uh you see the the stuff it, it with this another bad thing that comes um with the use of this is um they compare themselves oh, to, to people um i mean they're um i look back at my fifth grade year I mean, my ears had outgrown my body. Um, <laughs> my teeth didn't realize I was only 12 years old. So I had these two mm. things hanging out. And uh-huh. and so, you know, I, I was a very, I guess I would say I was a very confident kid, probably too com- uh, confident. God gave me big ears and big teeth for um, a good humbling. So, um, <laughs> but, you know, in, in, in that realm, um, you can compare yourself to, to, to girls on Instagram right. or for a fifth and sixth grade girl. And so... Really teaching about, you know, uh, I never would imagine four years ago or however it was, um, however long ago it was, um, taking over kids ministry. I, I really felt like I was going to be doing object lessons, but now I've got to, I've got to preach to them about depression. Right. Mm-hmm. I've got to preach to them about, I guess, anxiety and all those things, and not to compare yourself that God made you, you know, He fearfully and wonderfully made you, and how to, to take a. Um, a theme that you know or or something that they're a part of like the among us or whatever mm-hmm. something like that but then try to battle depression at the same time like it doing those uh, combining those two things to make it uh, keep their attention i think that's kind of or a, you know talking about manliness and uh 
femininity. Femininity. Such a hard word, femininity. I think if we do like a split event, like I take the girls, you take the boys, you kind of do like a man cave kind of yeah. thing, just, you know, because masculin- masculinity, up, masculinity is a around. good thing, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, maybe do like a royalty party with the girls and, right. you know, your royalness and uh, royalty mm-hmm. in God's eyes, you know, all right. those things, just kind of teaching them that. You know, God created you. Right, and I, I like again. It's it's things we never thought we'd have to to. Uh, that like we, we shouldn't have to do that. Right, right, right. absolutely. But we um, have to. Right. We do. Um, we definitely do. I I, I never would imagine having to preach on depression, no. all, all those things. But um, trying to, I think, trying to relate the, you know, the Davids that you know we we see as the the King Davids, the the giant killer. Well, um, if you read in Psalms, David. David had terrors by night, so I don't know if I took this out of context or not, but I talked about, you know, even David had nightmares, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, how David dealt with the nightmares was with God, and, um, you know, I, I don't think that something we, we I focused on, maybe September, October, um, focused on these months is really the spirit of fear, and, uh, of course, I went back to my um, spiritual warfare pop that open mm. and uh try to make it to uh preach Binding to and loosing that was right. probably one of the best oh, services yeah. best services we've ever had mm. in kids quest so talked about um uh, told a story about a young boy who um he went to a science lab one day <laughs> snuck this is so terrible i'm a terrible <laughs> storyteller teller too so snuck away from his class into a uh this room that was marked biohazard and all that stuff and had this got his hands in this uh thing with spiders and he got bit and he's trying to tell the story of spider-man without saying it's just a spider-man right. so um hey, this is the spiritual part right is that very serious part mm, so yeah um so what if what if the question was what if peter parker lived his whole life mm-hmm. um something that was so cool inside of him but never tapped into never it never use the power never experience you know throwing that web and swinging from the uh big buildings or whatever and so got them like you know what is he talking about with spider-man well we have a power as children of god being able to use the name we have the power of binding and loosening how boring of our lives um we have this power within us but we never tap into it so you know, we went down the line of, you know, stuff that you're battling. You have the power within you just to, to, to bind it and to lose freedom. And that's probably one of the most um, incredible services with Kids mm-hmm. Quest that we've ever been in. We had um, one girl who um, is very close to us. Um, I remember her coming. I haven't got a response out of her in the altar, and I, I can't tell you the last time. But she she had been battling the spirit of fear. Um <clears throat> She'd been very fearful, even um, borderline depressed because, again, her body was changing mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and all this. So she, this thing, she would love to compare herself to, um, to people. And, and so she, she'd come to the altar, and, um, which was uh, amazing. Uh, and she made that step. But then she began to, to I, I remember reading her lips that I, I bind my spirit of fear. And like, you know, start wow. crying on this, but, um, <laughs> you know, that, that as, as kids ministers was so, uh, uh rewarding, um, that we took a subject that something that was relatable to them, something that they're facing and somehow met in the middle and, um, you know, going back to, uh, sister Dowdy's prayer book, uh, we just went down the line and, you know, loose the, um, the bond, the, the we, spirit of infirmity. Yes. Yeah, all those things and uh lose some freedom and it was a very uh very rewarding service mm-hmm. and uh you know it, you talk about heritage um at the beginning it's just um trying to go we went back to um thankful for your nana's prayer book yeah and uh you know it that day you know it was written however many years ago but that day it, it set a 12 year old girl free from oh yeah uh, what she was facing and so it was a it was a very yeah, but it's, it's things you, you never would imagine you have to preach to these kids. But um, this just makes them grow up, um, exposes them to yeah. stuff that, um, you know, very, very much quicker than uh, it should be. What are some safeguards 
um, you guys obviously had social media when you guys were younger. Yeah. What are some safeguards your parents put in your guys' lives? Oh. Check your phone. Check. Yeah. <laughs> Give me your phone. Goodness, yeah. I heard that a bunch. Yeah, just no questions asked and just, um, you know, nothing against uh, so anything that you have to keep secrets, not good. So um, my, my phone um, was an open book to them. I remember one guy, um, it's amazing how um, – it, it is amazing how crazy these things are. I remember one uh, friend that I had, his a code that he would put into his phone would open up the phone that he wanted his parents to see, and then he'd tap a different code, and it's a completely different contact list, Mom. picture, database, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, it, yes, as, as uh, trying to help the parents with their kids because we're around them, you know, there's some stuff that you're not going to be able to catch. Right. Like you're not going to be able to put guardrails. Right. Um, you know, there's there's only some stuff that'll be caught or whatever just by praying over, um, you know, your kids. And and I know it sounds crazy. We don't even have kids, and we're preaching the parents. But um, you know, well, no, your parents have done it for you guys though, so right. you can talk to it. Right. And right. even your brother Hammond and sister Lauren, they, I think they had a class like with the parents, kind of. Bring your kid's phone. Like, we're going to kind of show you all the new things. There's, like, been so many updates with crazy things. So they're just kind of teaching them how to – there's apps that you can put on the phone that block certain apps and, you know, all those things. So they're just kind of informing the parents on Sure. Yeah, I feel like that's something that parents are starting to realize a little bit yeah. more of how to put these safeguards on the phones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, with, with phones and uh, – I remember my parents uh, – put safeguards with my friends um mm-hmm. who i um hang who around. i could h- hang around and show me your with. friends i'll show you your future that's mm-hmm. the I was greatest, raised on that. Yeah. greatest quote um i remember some safeguards with them and um friends and and phones and and time idle time um you know just the the, the more i could be involved in stuff at the church and uh be involved in my family less time i had you know, alone and um, it's, it's all that. So uh, those are some safeguards that my parents put in place. Yeah. It can but. be a great tool. It's just, you know, how many souls have been won through social media sure. and live stream and all those things. Just teaching them how to use it at a young age responsibly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a big tool to, to fail on, too, it for is. teenagers. I mean, I'm 31 now. I'm thinking back to when I was, like, 15. I was so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you think yeah. you know everything. You do, sure. yeah. You're the smartest person in the room. Your parents are dumb. <laughs> but you get to a point where you're like, wow, I, yeah. I'm dumb. And then you're yeah. trying to I'm teach not, them, yes. don't do the same please, thing. Please, yes, yeah. please don't do this. You know, right. Your parents, what they're saying is, is right. Right. Um, who were kind of some of your guys' mentors growing up? Well, um, I, I think one thing with, um, I know he's my pastor. I but say being in preacher's um, homes. My, like. Outside of, if you take the the my dad outside of the pastoral role, um, I like I loved hanging out with him. So, and I know he's my pastor, but um, you know he's he's my dad. But he was somebody I wanted to, um, I wanted to be like somebody. I wanted to. I think my dad's like the funniest dude in the world. So, um, I, I wanted to act just like him, and I and it, that goes back to to him and how he had the relationship with his pastor. Um, you know, everything, the, the wisdom that my dad showed to me or showed in situations, he would always like back it up with a story about his pastor. Well, Bishop McCall in 1974, this lady did this and this is how he responded. Mm -hmm. And, um, that only came through spending time with his pastor and, um, which I know it's the, the mentor, but. I, I chose to have my pastor be a mentor. Um, you know, he, he, he'd tell me yes or no, and I, I'd listen to him. But, um, you know, he my dad would put people, mentors in my life, like um, Pastor Sean Dowdy. Um, he brought him in to do a marriage retreat, and he said, hey, you're going to play golf with him. And uh, I, I just remember we're in the midst of golf. Um, pastor Sean would, 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 would tell me, just little nuggets of, of – and I, you look back, it's like how, how cool was that that I had a mentor like Pastor Dowdy or um, your brother Dowdy, um, obviously probably the greatest uh, mentor, Absolutely. greatest pastor on this planet. So um, 
then it, I, I was put around people that, um, I, as far as not necessarily spiritual, they were spiritual men, but uh, men that showed me how to work. Um, you know, I watched my, obviously watched my dad, uh, how he worked at the church, but then he would put me with people, uh, good men in the church that... Just to make you better. Yeah, taught me how to work, that didn't care, like, you know, if I slacked off, um, they really didn't care about my feelings. You know, you didn't get the job done. And I think that instilled in me. Mm -hmm. um, That's how my mom was, too. Hey, Flannery can do it. She'll yeah, do it. Yeah, you know. it was a If you need anything, ask Flannery. Yeah, <laughs> and you look back, that was annoying at the time, but then... I'm grateful it's like for it. You're, that was the greatest lessons of... Uh, of work ethic and all those, um, all those things. I, I, we work as a family, um, at back home and, and, um, mom and dad put my brother-in-laws, uh, basically gave them free reign over my life. Like, um, you, you, you're with them. Uh, you work with, with me. They worked with me more than my parents did. Uh, so they gave them liberty to, 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 borderline spank me but uh you know if there's anything well, did they that, ever spank you for no real? no but my that pay wanted to. but my pay has gotten docked several times by my sisters i don't know how that showed worked. up late to practice yes. yeah. yeah and it's you know that's just like i remember one time i, I showed up five minutes late i was docked I, I worked for the church but then i was a musician on the side on sundays which obviously i was not um, that wasn't a part of my job description so i was just that was my ministry mm -hmm. um Show up five minutes late for service. I was 16. No, I was not 16. I was, I was working. So I had to be 18. This is terrible. It was actually last year. No, I'm just yeah. Um, um, so I showed up late for, I was 18 years old, right out of high school. That's what it was. Showed up five minutes late for practice. And, you know, just didn't even really think anything of it. Got my paycheck on Friday for working for the, the, the school. I remember I, I mowed the grass. Um, it was like $50 less. I'm like, what? what is happening? I mean, 50 <laughs> bucks to me, but then it was like a right. big deal and still is a big deal. But, um, uh, mom, my, I went to mom and dad. I was like, Hey, uh, my check was, I need to talk, talk to the secretary, whatever. She's like, no, you were five minutes late. That's $10 for every minute. I remember oh I, that was like, Whoa. yeah, that was the biggest deal then. But you look, you, you look back. So it's now. like, if I show up five minutes early, yes. is that an yes. extra few? <laughs> yes. Um, but you look back now that, that showed us how rude it is. And I'm getting better about being late. We're still uh, working on yeah. it. Yeah, um, but how rude it is to, to not just be considerate. It doesn't get any easier when you get kids oh, being sure. rude. So. <laughs> sure. Uh, so that's kind of uh, back to the mentors thing. I, that's people who were put in my life um, that were around me all the time that could see maybe faults that my parents couldn't see, um, you know, and, and really try to correct some things there. Um, but, like, the greatest um, – greatest mentor in my life is 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 my pastor mm -hmm. and um so that's yeah. um I, I love to 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 be around him and um you know the wisdom that he has um i've seen him on his best days i've seen him on his worst days i know he's my dad i know he's my pastor but i just found myself wanting to be around him and um i try to try to be just like him so Sweet. what about you flannery who are some um, people obviously my mom and dad I think I have the best family in the world so you know Papa always says show me your friends I'll show you your future I made my family my best friends mm -hmm. so my mom my dad obviously trying to be just like them you know um, the things they instilled in me my pastor pastor's wife sister Lisa pastor shine you know their their advice their counsel their influence they didn't you know they didn't just you know tell me how it tell me how to live but they had a relationship with me mm -hmm. um and then obviously nana papa just the best in the whole world i still have people come up to me you're judy dowdy's granddaughter you mm -hmm. know that that prayer book saved my life you know just trying even though i was only nine when she passed away but mom told me things about her and you know hey nana would do this you know nana would always say this mm -hmm. just that kind of teaching me and then you marry into their family and it's Sister Carpenter, you know, what a what a great woman of God. Yeah. Um, so just trying to model my life after those kinds of people, just really awesome people. Yes, I agree. Um, Nolan, I, you, Nick, I was talking with Nixon about this. He was talking about how music kind of opened some doors for him for preaching. Mm -hmm. Has playing the drums done that for you? Sure. Um, you know, getting to travel a little bit and, and play – um, different conferences and stuff has really opened up 
some doors to, to meet people and get exposed to um, some things I would not have been exposed to uh, if it wasn't for uh, drums. And I know that's kind of becoming more popular, uh, like traveling mu- musicians and stuff. Um, you know, that, that hasn't always been. Uh, but, you know, just here and there, uh, being asked to play conferences and stuff, um, I'm getting to travel a little bit. Um, not so much since we've been married. Um, that's, um, as I say, do you got, you preach out a lot or, yeah. Um, I, I'd say probably once a month, maybe I'm looking at our calendar for, um, 2023. We're going to, uh, Germany. Does Flannery help you preach? Or? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, again, she, like the story I told, uh, however long ago, um, I cry every time I talk, so it's amazing. not really good. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, no, it's good. Yeah, she, no, she helps in the altars, which is yeah, it's a huge help. Yeah, it really is. And very, it's underestimated. It, it is. It is because what good is what good is me getting up there and, and blabbing for thirty minutes or whatever if there's not a change to it? So yeah, um, it's bad. Also, like when the preacher gets up there and his wife is just oh, just sitting there. That's the truth. Not involved in the service. It, people do pick up on that. Yeah, mm-hmm. they do. My dad told me before we got married, don't be a wallflower. So that's like <laughs> yeah. ingrained in me. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, getting to travel and um, what well, we've been doing, uh, some some um, VBS services and stuff like that um, for churches. And that's just uh, very cool to be able to not only travel, um, but do what you love, you know, be able to do kids' ministry. And, um, now, is it better doing it? How, how important is that for the people in your church, for the kids in your church, this, having that school? Oh, very important. I mean, it's, it's a, first of all, it's a soul winning um, tool, you know, the daycare. We've had, we have several families who have been won through the daycare and through the school. Um, but I love that where the kids that we see every Sunday, we're at school every day with them as well. So we get to just build a relationship with them, see them in a classroom, you know, see them play sports and stuff, you know. So one thing Flannery probably won't say on this, Flannery graduates with her master's um, this spring. In, oh, wow. Uh, when Christian school administration. Um, so so she's going to be bossing you, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. yeah. So um, she's applied herself to, to, to be in administration in our school. But, That's awesome. Um, proud of her for that. So, But our, our school is definitely um, one of the things that pushes our church as far as with the soul winning. Absolutely. Um, how how well, this, they want i mean the UC and illinois is even worse than tennessee but the public school system is you know crazy just what they're teaching and what they're allowing in the schools and so i think for our church people like it's just such a security or like mm-hmm. safety knowing that their kids peace are being taught mind. yeah peace of mind being taught by apostolic holy ghost filled teachers right. you know in an apostolic environment as well right and I know that that comes with different challenges too because now our kids are not exposed or are not around um worldly friends mm-hmm. and so we we don't necessarily like the kids here um you know go to the matching school system invite people you know they're they're able to invite people more easy right uh, easily they're able to have p7s and all all that all those great things yeah. that our kids don't have um, so then that brings some challenges to try to get outside of our ourselves. Yeah, to we'll go try invite. and say, hey, bring a friend to this kids' quest party. And they're like, all my friends go to church. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but our, our school is definitely um, one of the strengths of our church. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, spending time with the same kids. We spend more time with them than their parents. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look so. at the hours. Um, how, I, I guess, how our school came to be was um, – my dad was, um, he'll tell you this, somewhat of a hellion child. So um, my grandmother, um, they've never had a, a brand new car. Um, my grandmother bought, uh, I think it was a Chevy Nova. I don't even know what that is mm-hmm. or what year it was. Um, the pride and joy of the family. Uh, my dad, my grandfather, dad says he worked really hard to, to, to get the, the, the family a brand new car. And uh, so they bought the car. Um, and my grandmother drove it to work one day and somebody had knocked the side of it out, um, basically totaled it, but you could still drive it. So my grandmother, um, got the insurance check and, uh, about that time they had started to go a little bit to the Knoxville church, just kind of visit and, um, um, 
Pastor McCool, the young, uh, Bishop McCool now, uh, made a uh, um, just not an advertisement, but just talking about the importance of their Christian school. And uh, so my grandmother took that insurance check. She wouldn't have been able to afford the tuition uh, if it wasn't for that check. And uh, she paid a full year for um, my my dad and, Jerry. Um, and then my uncle Jerry. Um, my dad tried to get kicked out of the school uh, multiple times. <laughs> he said that he. That's so hard uh, to believe. I know it, it really is. He would. Uh, um, one time he threatened to blow up the school bathroom. He said he, <laughs> Whoa. he yeah, uh, this, he, he tried his best to get kicked out. Yeah. He, and uh, one, one of the teachers told him in, uh, in the office uh, with the principal and Bishop McCool said, hey, I know um, you're trying to, to leave this place, but we're not giving up on you. And um, that, there was one big meeting. My dad said it was all his teachers. Um, all his teachers were um, basically around this table bishop mccool and the principal and um you know they said we know you want to be kicked out um but um basically we feel like god's got something for you that we're not going to give up on you the next friday um a chapel service uh bishop mccool preached and uh, my dad was uh, filled with the holy ghost and uh really made he, he said he said after service um bishop said i i want you to come up here and and to state your name and to say i love you jesus and uh my dad said i remember being just so prideful like i did not want to be there mm -hmm. and uh he said i remember walking up there and grabbing that mic and saying my name is kenny carpenter and i love you jesus and uh, but it, you look back to that it's it's the it was a christian school that gave my dad the opportunity um um to, to be born again mm -hmm. um, and all the influences that came from that. Um, but then on the other, the flip side, I had an uncle uh, that had the same opportunities as my dad in that Christian school. And uh, my, my uncle was, um, was, was got, I, I, I think he got filled with the Holy Ghost before my dad he got baptized for my dad. Um, but then after they graduated, um, my uncle Jerry was, was, even used in the Knoxville church um and even dad said he was using the gifts of the spirit like like very early um in his relationship with god and so he started having doors open for him but then suddenly he took a turn um uh, kind of backslid and um basically long story short committed first degree murder and spent 38 years in prison and it's like, so what, what's the difference between my dad, um, same opportunities, uh, same teacher, same Christian school. Um, one is um, obviously my father, awesome guy. One has 38 years of his life uh, that he had to pay for what he did. Um, but it was something that was planted in my Uncle Jerry that after he got out of prison, the first place he come to was that church, mm -hmm. that church that he tried to abandon that school that, you know, he thought this was the worst place in the world. Um, but something was planted in, it's like the value, you look at the value of that insurance check. Yeah. Um, right. You know, one, you've got a, um, a pastor, a superintendent, uh, an go down, you know, a credible father, um, you know, that was all from influences in that school. Then one, you've got somebody who's the other side, you got somebody who wasted his life, but that insurance check, um, you know, placed him in an environment that the, the word of God did not return void. Right. And uh, 38 years of his life was rightfully so pay He had to pay for what he did, but then he got out and he, he knew the first place he needed to go to was the church, the church that gave him the opportunity uh, to have a relationship with God. And uh, so make, go back to the school aspect. Um, the reason that we feel so strongly about the school um, is because that's how my dad come to God. Now we'll have some kids who uh, we probably um, it's on the it's on the line of should we accept them? They've you know they've got good or good enough grades and and all this stuff. But do we want to accept this kid? Um, maybe they've got this on their um, thing that they did at the previous school, and Dad just always shows up in the meetings and says, "Hey, that was me. Mm -hmm. If you want to give up on me, that's fine." And when he puts that that <laughs> statement down, it's, it's like, like okay. okay, yep, he's. Um, and that's always, that's awesome, uh, it's always been something that we've been thankful that he would say that, yeah. um, 
you know, you, you, you spend so much time with these kids and you have influence over them, um, hopefully influence them in the right direction. And, and you, you, you know, you look at kids that maybe give you attitude at school or um, give you back talk or whatever, but you look at them through the lens of, hey, that could be the next Pastor Carpenter. Yeah. Right. And that really just settles it. So That's awesome. Well, I want to thank you guys for doing this with me today. I know it was short notice, and I know it's freezing cold outside. <laughs> but right. Thank you. Thanks it's been an honor. Us, yeah. Yeah, thanks for being here. We want to thank uh, everybody for listening. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you at the next one.